Peace, peace, peace and abundance, everybody. Welcome back. Market Review, Wednesday, August 24th. Oh, it's Kobe Day. It's Kobe Day, 824. Shout out to the GOAT, man. Rest in peace. All right. This is MJ the Mastermind and TMG family. This is Market Review. This is your first time joining us, right? Um, this is where we go over the market, right? We talk about the technicals, the fundamentals, the earnings, the headlines, and everything in between. All right, so tap in with us Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. on Zoom. You can always find the link in our bio at the Mastermind Group LLC, right? Or my Instagram, MJ the Mastermind. All right. So before we move further, you know, let's jump into the affirmation of the day, right? Because we got to set the vibe, we got to set that energy, right? All right. So today's affirmation is I flow with what is happening in the moment. I flow with what is happening in the moment, right? It's important to stay in flow, right? It's very, very important to stay in flow, you know, not carrying a vibe of resistance, right? We want to be in flow. We want to keep that vibe of, you know, um, you know, that flow state. Because when you're in the flow state, you really operate on a higher frequency. Right, and you just attracting everything that you need, right? It's a different kind of energy, right? But let's jump into it, man. What happened to Nvidia? Oh man, it's not looking good. It's not looking good, right? Um, but let's jump into it, man. Let's jump into the rundown. Then we'll jump into uh, global and company news, right? Hope everybody is having a blessed day. I hope everybody is having a blessed day. Remember to get your peace and abundance merch. Remember to tap into TMG, right? Follow us on Instagram, all right? All right, let's jump into it. Stock snap three-day losing streak. U.S. stocks edged higher Wednesday, snapping a three-day losing streak that, that was fueled by worries about the path forward for interest rates. In 4 p.m. Eastern trading, the S&P 500 rose 0.3%. The Dow was up 0.2%. The NASDAQ climbed 0.4%. The market is in this treading water phase right now, said Brian uh, Price, head of investment management at Commonwealth Financial Network. It's hovering near flat in anticipation of Jerome Powell's speech on Friday. Stocks came under pressure in recent days from a series of data releases that showed contractions in the manufacturing and services sectors. Also, Fed officials have signaled that interest rates are likely to continue increasing to fight inflation. The central bank begins its annual economic policy symposium in Jackson Hole on Thursday, and Mr. Powell is set to speak Friday. We still have the same problems we need to solve, shortages of labor, shortages of energy, and other commodities, and the headwinds of a tightening cycle, said Giorgio Capuzzo, a senior portfolio manager at J.O. Hambro Capital Management. Oil prices climbed for a second day after Saudi Arabia and some of its OPEC plus allies suggested a cut to output citing high volatility. Global crude benchmark Brent rose 1% to $101.22. Energy stocks in the S&P 500 paced the benchmark's gains, rising around 1%. All right. A data release showed durable goods orders in July were flat, coming in below economists' forecasts. Tech giants Salesforce and NVIDIA are scheduled to report earnings after markets close. All right, growth is falling quite precipitously everywhere. We've had a pretty big signal of weakening economic conditions, said Fahad Kamal, chief investment officer of Clainworth Hambros. But I think we'll see Powell stick to his hawkish tone. He has to keep talking tough on inflation. The yield on the benchmark 10-year Treasury note edged up to 3.105% from 3.053% on Tuesday, 
extending a three-day climb. The yield curve continues to be inverted, flashing a recessionary signal with the two-year yield at 3.384%. Intuit rose 3.6% as of 4 p.m. after the tax prep software company reported better than expected earnings, authorized share buyback, and lifted its dividend. Nordstrom tumbled about 20% after the clothing retailer lowered its financial goals for the year, for the year citing risk of a steeper economic downturn and a slowdown in consumer spending. Oh, man, say it ain't so. Overseas, the pan-continental um, Europe 600 rose 0.2%. Um, in Asia, Major benchmarks declined with the Shanghai Composite Index falling 1.9% and Hong Kong's Hang Seng down 1.2%. Chinese real estate developer Logan Group declined more than 50% after its shares resumed trading on Wednesday. There's a lot of pessimism regarding the housing market in China. It looks really ugly with the mortgage repayment strikes, said Olivier Marciat, investment manager at Unigestion. The investment community is looking for signs that things are stabilizing on that front in China, which we haven't got at that at the moment. All right. All right. So that's our that's our rundown this afternoon so far. All right. We're gonna get into a couple of things here. One second. Let's jump in the uh, global news. Hey, it ain't so. All right, global news. Durable goods orders unchanged in July. Businesses pulled back on orders for long-lasting goods, reflecting a cooling in demand um, amid other signals of a slowing U.S. economy. The job market is stronger than previously reported, data shows. Employers in the U.S. added about 462,000 more jobs in the year through March than the Labor Department originally estimated. China rolls out aid to help power firms and save rice harvests. A drought amid record heat wave compounds, the economic challenges from Beijing's COVID strategy and the country's property slump. Jerome Powell's dilemma. What if the drivers of inflation are here to stay? The Federal Reserve chairman gathers with policymakers this week at Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where they face the prospect that rising prices could be a feature of the landscape a rapid about face from a time when they worried about inflation being too low. U.S. oil inventories fall as refiners boost activity. U.S. commercial inventories of crude oil fell by 3.3 million barrels, far exceeding analysts' forecasts for a drop of just 500,000 barrels. Ukraine marks subdued Independence Day with ch charred Russian vehicles. President um, Vladimir Zelensky's address channeled the pain of the loss of thousands of soldiers and civilians in the six months since Russia invaded, but also fresh optimism that Ukrainian forces have retaken the initiative. Big Oil's message to investors, you're too pessimistic. Despite the recent rally, crude prices are down for August and data suggests investors have reduced their involvement in oil and other commodity markets. Junk bond rally trips over rate hike fears. Investors' appetite for junk bonds is cooling ahead of a critical stretch for economic data and Fed policy stalling a summertime rally that had boosted low-rated corporate debt. Fed Kashkari says no time to back off on inflation struggle. Mm. Fed officials say central bank needs clear evidence price pressures abating. All right, y'all heard it. All right, company news, Salesforce stock slumps after trimmed earnings and sales forecasts um, outweigh. Um, so Salesforce executives trimmed their forecast for the year and projected a worse third quarter than Wall Street expected Wednesday while promising billions in stock repurchases for the first time. All right, so if we take a little bit of a deeper look into that. Um, Salesforce shares slipped 5.4% in after hours trading after the company lowered its outlook for the year and issued third quarter guidance below analyst expectations. 
the business software provider guided for fiscal 2023 revenue between 30.9 billion to 31 billion down from its prior range of 31.7 billion to 31.8 billion. The company trimmed its adjusted EPS forecast to between $4.71 to $4.73 from $4.74 to $4.76. Salesforce.com guided for third quarter revenue between 7.82 billion to 7.83 billion and adjusted earnings um, between 120 and 121. Analysts polled by FactSet expected 8.07 billion in revenue and a dollar and 28 cents in adjusted EPS. So they came in a lower than expected you know, for their guidance. The guidance comes as the company reported lower profit and better than expected revenue in the last quarter. Salesforce.com posted net income of $68 million on revenue of $7.72 billion in the second quarter compared to net income of $535 million on revenue of $6.34 billion a year earlier. So that's a huge drop in net income from $535 million to $68 million. All right, and they had more revenue. So their revenue went up, but their earnings drastically went down. It's not a good sign. The company also said its board authorized a share repurchase program to repurchase up to $10 billion, which co-executive um, Mark Benioff said will deliver value to shareholders as the company charts a path to $50 billion in revenue in fiscal 2026, all right? So if we look at, take a quick look at those shares. Those shares are, are down. Um, we close at 180, those shares are trading around 168, 169 right now, right? So nice, um, nice strong move down in the after hours um, on Salesforce. Uh, we'll, we'll get back into it. Um, Twitter and Elon Musk lawyers battle over user data in court after whistleblower complaints. Investors want more information on the social media platform's calculation of monetizable daily active users. Twitter says it has cooperated with data requests as required. Snowflake stock soars over 15% after large revenue beat. Shares of Snowflake Inc. surged higher in Wednesday's afternoon, Wednesday's aftermarket action after the data software company easily topped revenue expectations for its latest quarter. Elon Musk Twitter legal fight complicated by whistleblower complaint. Allegations by the platform's former head of security may open new legal pathways in Musk's effort to abandon the $44 billion takeover. Sephora agrees to a $1.2 million settlement of data privacy charges. The proposed deal would be the first enforcement action under the California Consumer Privacy Act, the state's attorney general said. Apple sends invites for September 7th um, event. New iPhones are expected. The in-person event is set to take place at the Steve Jobs Theater at the company's headquarters in Cupertino, California. Revlon shareholders lose fight for bankruptcy committee. The interests of minority shareholders are adequately protected without an official committee, a bankruptcy judge says. Petco cuts outlook as customers buy fewer pets. The lowered view comes as sales slowed further following a boom from millions more homes with pets. All right. uh, Brinker International's earnings outlook disappoints. The parents of Chili's Grill and Bar issued earnings guidance for fiscal 2023 that fell shy of Wall Street expectations after the company posted a steep drop in earnings for the recently ended quarter. Peloton to start selling fitness equipment and apparel on Amazon. The move is intended to increase distribution of its products as Peloton struggles with weak demand and a sagging stock price, All right? All right, so that's our rundown, y'all. Global news, company news, right? Let's um, let's touch on Nvidia, as they had a huge miss. 
a worrisomeness, a red flagness. So um, NVIDIA says gaming market conditions are challenging. Q3 forecast misses, right? NVIDIA said that the miss was because of lower sales of its gaming products, which are primarily graphics cards for PCs, which are facing challenging market conditions. So EPS came in at 51 cents. The expected was $1.26. Huge miss on the earnings side. Revenue was $6.7 billion. Forecast was $8.1 billion. Huge miss on the revenue side. So huge top and bottom line miss, we know for NVIDIA. Um, mm. Mm -mm -mm. NVIDIA missed on revenue, but refinitive estimates didn't change after the company warned on guidance and said it expected to report 6.7 billion in the quarter. NVIDIA stock fell over 2% in extended trading. So right now, as you can see, we're down about 4%. Shipmaker said it expected $5.9 billion in sales in its fiscal third quarter versus refinitive consensus estimates of $6.95 billion. So whew, guidance came in significantly lower um, than what analysts were expecting. NVIDIA's gaming department revenue was down 33% year over year to 2000 or sorry, 2.04 billion um, was down 33% year over year. Wow. NVIDIA said that the miss was because of lower sales of its gaming products, which are primarily graphics cards for PCs. NVIDIA said it would shift prices with its retailers to address challenging market conditions for the industry that it said it expected to persist through the current quarter. The company's data center business did slightly better. It rose 61% on an annual basis to 3.8 billion, driven by what the company calls hyperscale customers, which are big cloud providers. So again, data center killing it. AMD, Nvidia, you know, um, you know, cloud is going crazy. Right? The demand for cloud is going crazy. NVIDIA also has a few smaller lines of business. It's professional visualization business, which sells graphics chips for enterprise users, declined 4% annually to 496 million. Automotive remains small, although it increased 45% year over year to 220 million. Strong growth there. NVIDIA said that revenue from its dedicated cryptocurrency mining chips CMP was nominal, contributing to a 66% annual decrease in its OEM and other categories. NVIDIA stock is down over 42% so far since the beginning of the year, it had been a pandemic darling, rising heavily as work from home prompted purchases of graphics cards and server chips, supercharging NVIDIA's business and driving 61% revenue growth in fiscal 2022. Right. Yeah, it's not looking too good. Not looking too good. I mean, data center is carrying them, right? Data center, yeah, data center was carrying them. Data center did 3.8 billion. They came in at 5.9. So if I do some quick math here, that's almost, it's like 60, 65 percent of the business is the data center right now. Yeah, so 64 percent of the revenue came from the data center. Hmm. It's not looking too good. <laughs> They're dependent on data center growth. Um, Besides data center, their gaming came in at 2 billion. So 3.8. Yeah, that was basically it. I mean, data center and gaming was it. Um, their other lines did were very minimal. Um, so if their gaming continues to decrease, 
it's not looking too good. I don't think they can depend on the data center because AMD is dominating that space as well. I'm so lucky. Peace and abundance. Can you hear me? Yeah. Peace. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to comment what you just were talking about. Is with the decline in gaming and then the uptick in cloud, and then AMD and NVIDIA doing about the same thing. Like, is that going to be a problem going forward? Is it going to be what? A problem going forward. For them? For AMD and NVIDIA, because or majority of their revenue used to come from the hardware space. So I'm just concerned, like, hmm. like, I mean, Microsoft's in that space, Google's in that space, like, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the growth is there. Um, I mean, both of them are having, I think AMD's server bit server business grew 80 over 80% Nvidia over 61%. So I think the growth is there as of now. Right. Um, I think that may, may be a problem as we start to see growth slow down, but I don't think it's a problem now for now. I think maybe a few years from now, as we start to see growth maybe slow down, right? But okay, so 61% annually, annual growth is, is is amazing. I mean, that's just a hundred dollars going to $160. I mean, can you do it again? Right? Mm -hmm. Why does when now you're in a decline? Right. And then we, also, we got demand slowing down. Over, from a worldwide, you know, computer. So I'm just, I'm just confused as you know, what is the progression of Nvidia and AMD? Yeah, no, that's true. I think you know, like last year, 2020, we saw a huge boost in those stocks due to gaming. You know, due to work from home. You know, people. Um, you know, setting up their desktops, buying graphics cards, you know, doing these things, you know, the, the new cycle for the for the gaming system was a new PlayStation, the new Xbox, right? Um, so we saw a lot of that. And now with 33% drop um, on gaming, man, that's, uh, that's significant. They lost a billion. They pretty much lost a billion dollars on gaming you know, year over year. And then the other, the other models ain't doing too good. Um, so yeah, I think it could be a problem eventually. I don't think they can depend on cloud growth per se, because I think Microsoft may have something up their sleeve. You know, it's been, uh, I don't know if they're still planning on bringing out Pluton, the server, the chip that they were working on. Uh, but yeah, I think it could be a problem. But at the same time, that space may be big enough, you know, for the both of them, All right? Space may be big enough for the both of them and the other competitors. But, you know, I think they do have a superior product, right? When it comes to server chips. Um, so depending on what the TAM is, total addressable market is, I think it, it could be um, big enough for the both of them. But at the same time, like I said, I don't think they, they both of those companies can depend strictly on, you know, server, you know, uh, data center revenue. What's up, Matt? Sorry, uh, hey, what's going on? Are we looking at AMD? Not AMD, but NVIDIA all wrong. Because all I hear is about the gaming future, but we're not we're not looking at the building blocks of what NVIDIA is trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're talking about the omniverse and what they're really gearing towards and pushing towards, that is going to be the building block for other businesses to use, right? Because you want you want something that will be able to help other businesses become better. And that's what NVIDIA is doing right now is they're having those building blocks for those other businesses come use and have their resources to make them a bigger space. Gaming is cool, 
But if you're looking at them just for gaming, then I think you were missing the ball, especially when you have to go to AI and machine learning. And businesses aren't going to pull back their technology because they're so competitive, not even with each other as far as U.S. business goes, but globally, especially against China right now. You're going to have to keep on advancing your business. Tesla is not going to have the same GPUs as it's going to have now and in 2022, 2023, 2024. It's not going to happen if you're trying to be competitive in spaces. And that's going to be the same thing as far as computers goes. It's going to be the same thing as far as other type of machines that we're going to be using, especially if you're talking about quantum space. But um, I don't know. I think we're missing it. I think that uh, it's more than gaming. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Uh, I mean, the automotive business did grow 45%. Um, I think they definitely have a huge opportunity in the Omniverse, right? But how far out is that? Uh, how far out is that? And um, because, you know, the market still cares about the, you know, six months from now, a year from now, right? So, you know, how far out is the success of that, right? Because I believe the Omniverse falls into the professional visualization segment of their business. And that segment declined 4%, right? Um, so, so, I do see that being a big thing, but you know, how far out are we away from that being successful? Right. What is the timeline on that? Right, because who who's to say the stock doesn't fall for another six months, another year, right? Before then, eventually, you know, whenever the omniverse or whatever segments pick up, then it starts to you know, you know, uh, perform, right? Because between now and the success of that, what is the stock price going to do, right? What is earnings going to do, right? Well, what's going to happen to revenue, right? So just something to think about. All right. Um, student loans, that was a big news today, right? Yeah, short-term pain, long-term gain. Yep, I agree, Matt. Um, Kian said, breaking news, Amazon shutting down its Amazon Care Services by end of the year. Was that the, um, the medicine thing that they were doing? Yeah, it's a telemed that they were doing. Are they buying Teladoc? Let me think. Mm. Uh, that benefit Teladoc and all the other um, health services that Amazon was going to get into. I wonder, you think they can buy Teladoc? Y'all think that? No, nah, they're shutting down their care. Their care uh, yeah, why would they want to? they doing the right thing by shutting it down. Stop it. You don't want them to buy Teladoc? Matthew, Matthew, not, not. Not here, man. Not here. Mm. Wow. Uh, it says this decision wasn't made lightly and only be only became clear after many months of careful consideration. Amazon senior vice president of health Neil Lindsay and the email staff, although our enrolled members have loved many aspects of Amazon care, it is not a complete enough offering. For the large enterprise customers we have been targeting and wasn't going to work long term. Hmm. Uh, the decision to shutter Amazon Care is a surprise given Amazon CEO Andy Jassy's commitment to expanding Amazon's healthcare investment. It follows Amazon's $3.9 billion acquisition of concierge healthcare startup One Medical last month a deal that could still face antitrust scrutiny from the FTC. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting move. Uh, interesting moves. So I wonder that how that affects, says Amazon Care employees could be placed in other jobs within Amazon 
and that the company would support employees looking for roles outside of the company. So, so more job cuts coming from Amazon as well. But they did say that they're going to place them within and then find, try to find somewhere else. So they're not just going out on the street. They're going to try to set them up in something else. Anybody can say they're going to try. <laughs> I mean, this is true. Anybody can say anything. So we're saying when people get laid off, they automatically, y'all say, when people, these job cuts, oh my God. So y'all automatically assuming they're not going to pick up another job. No, I'm just ass assuming that not everybody's going to be able to pick up another job. You know, like not everybody's going to be placed in another role in Amazon. It's going to be. Right. I agree. Yeah, it's going to be people that are not placed somewhere and that, you know, I feel like they'll find that, something. Them saying we're going to support employees looking for roles outside of the company. I mean, like, that's easy to say. I mean, what you going to do, recommendations or, you know. Well, no, they might, they partner with people. They they partner with other, uh -huh. they partner with other corporations so they can do it like a partnership thing. Like, hey, we have so-and-so, you know, and do like a lateral move over or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be oh. yeah, 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 me, um, Jack. <laughs> 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 no, no, I was looking like, at the chat. like you ain't trying to hear what I'm saying. No, I was a uh, uh, T Frank. He dropped a crazy stat in the chat. Student loan news is good if you're white. Black women average five times more college debt, meaning the 10k disproportionately benefits the descendants of the creators of this mess. Yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, I know yeah, but. But the thing is, it's something rather than nothing at all. I mean, the last two or three presidents, three or four presidents, don't forgive any loan debt. So it's important mm -hmm. that we kind of see the forest through the trees. I mean, they're not forgiving all of it, but at least they're forgiving some of it. Got to work with some. I'd rather have something than absolutely nothing. Right. Right. Yeah, so 10K... Um... In federal student loans, if you make less than, I think it was 125. Uh, Remember, it's, it's also a political move, too. It's not just of course. You know, to help us out. Biden been really busy over these last months before midterms. Been signing a lot of stuff. That is all the way true. He's trying, he trying to get that minority vote, that's why. Been, he's been super busy, more busy than he's been the whole last couple of years. You know, I mean, well, that's primarily because of Joe Manchin. So, Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema have been holding up most of the bills, and they finally agreed to settle as long as they put coal in. Uh, I believe he lives in, uh, I think it's Kentucky, not Kentucky, but West Virginia. So, he's been holding up. Uh, a significant number of the bills, but obviously his election is coming up soon. And, you know, he held up the environment bill, he held up the infrastructure bill. And because of that, I think his, his constituents are watching that. And so now he's like, well, let me go ahead and agree to pass it because he, they, uh, the Democrats obviously need all 50 votes plus Kamala Harris because the Republicans are going to vote against everything. So they needed Cinema and Manchin to agree. And he only started agreeing in these last like three or four weeks, which runs in line with him trying to run for re-election. So I'm gonna blame this all on Joe Manchin. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. You know, a uh, wise man once said, it's politics as usual. Right. But 10K, if you uh, make less than 125,000, uh, up to 20K if you um, if you got Pell Grants as well, right? You also got to remember, nothing is free in this world. So everything, even though they're saying it's free, it's coming with a price tag. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think they said it's going to cost um, taxpayers 300 billion. Something along those lines. 
What's up, Matt? Was your was your hand back up or you already uh was it up from last time? All right, yeah, I think that's that's mostly everything. All right, so we got Nvidia, Salesforce, you know, both disappointed. Um tomorrow we got Peloton pre-market, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, T D Bank, um, Burlington. Abercrombie. Uh, aftermarket, we got a firm. We got Alta, Dell, Gap, Birthday, VMware. So, earnings season is wrapping up. Earnings season is wrapping up. Um, but I think, you know, this Salesforce news and this NVIDIA news um, really gives us some insight into how it could look for a couple other companies come you know, uh, next season's earnings, right? I like to look at Salesforce as kind of like a um, an indicator, if you will, of, of Microsoft as well, right? So if they're not, you know, thinking that they're gonna do too strong Q3, um, it makes me kind of worry about Microsoft. They're not completely the same, but they're definitely both in software as a service. Let's, uh, let's jump to the charts. Let's jump to the charts, y'all. Let's see what we got today. Kind of just basing out here. Uh, I'll share my share my screen here in a second. I'm kind of just basing here in uh in demand. Market kind of consolidating as we go into this Jackson Hole speech on Friday. So let's look at ES. Clear this out a little bit. All right, so, you know, we, we came up, we rejected the 200, pretty simply. We rejected the 200 and we rejected the key levels that I told y'all about, which is the May, um, which is the 4303, right, 4303 and, uh, Give me, give me one second. All right, so this, this comes back to here. Right? This comes back to, you know, support here in July, 2021, right? In October, so I mean, September, October, 2021, right? So remember last year, um, we kind of started to fall you know, uh, we kind of peaked out around the end of August and then we started to fall for the next one, two, three, four weeks in um, September, right? So the whole September, we kind of just fell. Uh, but you can see we got support turning into resistance. We had a strong rejection up here. Uh, rejected the 200 day. We got a squeeze on the, on the weekly EMAs here. On the, on the weekly, right? This is gonna be very, very important how we close the month. Right? If we close the month, right? remember these key levels here, the May open, the May open, and I'm gonna add these back here because they got, you know, they got taken away when I cleared my chart. So the May open. right there. And then I'm gonna show y'all what happened on NASDAQ. 
testing that key level and the may close. Right. So we're kind of, we came down, we're kind of, sellers are trying to, it looks like hold us under this level here after we rejected that key level up around 4,300. Now, if you look at the weekly, like I said, you know, we have a break and then a retest. So I think buyers could step in here. Um, we could bounce out of demand in these key, key levels here. And then we come back up, double top, potentially lower high, but who knows? Maybe we, you know, depending on what Powell says, we blast through, right? We blast through and continue up, right? I'm not in that camp, but it's possible. So right now, if we go to the daily, we can see that these there's a lot of, you know, we got those key levels here to May open, to May close, and then we're inside demand as well. Okay. Now, like I said, we can bounce here. This was a two down candle. Thought it might be a, a three candle, but we didn't quite clear it. Let's look at SPX. See if we got a three. No, no, no. Not a three there. It's not a three there either. So we'll see what happens. We are trading under the twenty EMA now on the daily. You see, uh, we have some resistance up here today, uh, but again, we got stacked demands here. Stack demand, so wouldn't be surprised if buyers take us back up. Right. Um, let me throw the fib on real quick from the swing. So nice rejection in 61.8. We're kind of testing the 50 right, right now. So there's a lot of key levels here in this area. This is a very, very important area. And we do the fib from the all time high. And then we're kind of trading in a zone between the 50 and the 38 too. So we'll see what happens. But like I've been telling you, I think the NASDAQ is the main driver of this market right now. Right? So looking at where the NASDAQ is, remember I pointed out a level to y'all yesterday, that 12,889 on, on NQ, right? which is the yearly open, 2021 open. Um, and if we throw a fib from the swing high, y'all know we rejected the 61.8 perfectly, right? Up here, perfect rejection of the 61.8. And now you can see the activity at this key level today. You can see here, we did a lot of consolidating since, what's today, Wednesday, since Monday. Monday, we tested it. Tuesday, we traded around it, right? Wednesday, today, we traded around it in the early market section session. Right, a lot of activity, and then we started to break out, um, you know, towards the end of the day. Right? Actually, this morning, around 10, 11, we broke out, and then we started to pull back towards the end, and then nice, strong candle from the 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., which is interesting because Salesforce and NVIDIA sold off. But you can see here on the four-hour, a lot of accumulation, down here, uh, a lot of accumulation here at this level, this key level, we got a three candle. We got back-to-back -back three candles here, um, bullish three candles. One here and another one here. So buyers are fighting. I think we can make another move back up um, after this consolidation period, right? But back-to-back -back basing days, right off this key level here. So I'm expecting a move back up. Um, the, the VIX is rejecting the 200-day. You can see here we have a gap, pull back a little bit. So I would love for us to close this gap, let the indexes run up. I'm setting up a nice uh, bull trap. And then I think the VIX will bounce after this pullback and after the indexes rise, I think they'll start to turn back down. But it's all gonna really matter what Jerome Powell says, but 
I think Jerome Powell is going to be pretty stern and come out a little hawkish only because, you know, um, that's what a lot of the other Fed, Fed members have been saying. A lot of the other Fed members have been saying, you know, they're not looking to pivot as soon as the market thinks. Um, and now the market is pricing in a 75. Actually, let's take a look back at Fed Fund Futures real quick, see if we got any changes. So yeah, the market is still is about 61% now. 61% probability that we get a 75, right? 61%. So we'll see what um, Paul has to say. All right. Um, so that's that's what I got here. I was looking at crude. Again, cruel rising, we, we close above the 200 day today, right? We closed above it. Nice price action, we came down. Um, sort, of a, sort of a double bottom, not as clean as I would want it to be, but we made a lower low and then we started starting to break out here. It looks like we could get a cross on the daily here soon, indicating um, a reversal, All right? We'll see how, you know, we can hold above the 200 day moving forward and get back to $100, get back to $100, right? Now remember, like I keep saying, crude topped in the market bottom. There's somewhat of a correlation there, somewhat of a correlation. Um, obviously more, more than likely due to inflation, right? So if we, can, if we continue to see crude rise, uh, That means that we have enough. We have a September meeting and we have a November meeting. So let's say crude rises in the month of September, um, going into the November meeting, you know, where people are maybe expecting the Fed to be, you know, I think the market right now is pricing in a 25 basis point hike in November. So imagine if infl inflation goes up due to oil prices, that 25% basis or 25 basis point hike that the market is pricing in now, that's gonna shift dramatically if inflation continues to rise. Right? Because right now the market is pretty much pricing in that inflation is peaking. So it's just something we gotta watch, keep our eye on oil here uh, over these next couple of weeks. Not to mention, I mean, it kind of looks like it's in a bull flag here and we had a perfect 61.8 bounce from the swing low, All right? So just something to keep in mind. What's up, Aki? So, I mean, based on that ball flag, we could have 110 oil, 115 in the, in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's looking like. So, I mean, that's just gonna put a mint pressure. So 110 oil plus production cuts by OPEC. I mean, we have some down years. Yeah. For equities. Yeah, yeah, oil continues to rise. Um, I mean, like what? What's going to stop 150 oil? How about UK not ordering any oil from Russia? Okay, so it, it, here's what, what's scary for me. I think oil consumption usage is like 18 to 20% for transportation, right? But the other 80% is gonna hit hard at a hundred plus barrels, I mean a hundred plus dollars a barrel oil. Um and yeah if Russia's off the market that's even gonna put more of a pressure on 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 supply and demand. So um, what if they change it to nuclear? 
What if, they, what, what if they're working on nuclear right now? Okay, what that, that covers that covers energy production, you know, but you still got people driving. So either way, the transition is not happening fast enough um, from a, a oil um, decline that's going to impact everyday citizens. So yeah, and even if they do switch to nuclear, uranium was running today too. Mm. So I, again, I'm I'm just thinking what's what's the long term effects on resources, like import resources, going up exponentially. Um, do the, uh, that is, give give us your final point, Arky. Oh, um, I, I got a yeah, hard. What, all right, um, resources running exponentially high for, for, for prolonged years. What does it do to demand the other products? Mm. And how does how does the how does oil prices affect inflation going in the winter? Um, your heating costs, transportation costs, you know, because mm -hmm. if it's a holiday season and, and you got retail goods, if the retail goods are up exponentially high, plus your fixed costs are up exponentially high, are you going to be buying those goods or are you going to be trying to keep your, your home warm? And oil prices affect, you know, transportation costs, right? So if oil goes up, we continue to see upward pressure on the price of food, right? For transportation costs and everything else. So, um, yeah, we just gotta pay attention. We're looking at this monthly candle here. Um, I think this monthly candle could turn green. Um, so we're gonna keep our eye on that as well. Yeah, T. Frank, if you can make it quick, go ahead, bro. Yeah, thanks, y'all, for doing this every day. Uh, I'll make it quick. I got to shake, too. Uh, Aki, man, he's right, though. Like, if anybody has 10% or less to uh, risk on these speculations like oil, commodities, and uranium, do it. Because <laughs> the world is, is look, at, look at the war still, and the after effects is going to be five years out. So uh, if you got DB money to throw in the DBC URA, those commodities and uh, oil and uh, uranium ETFs, and you got, you know, somewhere under 10% to throw down and not, not worry about it, it, it should work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate, Thanks, y'all. I appreciate those gems right there. So y'all got some homework. I got some homework. Thank Go you, ahead. my brother. Yeah. No, I was just going to say thank you. Dropping those. Yeah, definitely. All right, y'all. Uh, tomorrow we got initial jobless claims. We got GDP. Um, and then Friday's the big day. All right. So make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell on that recording. And uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow. All right. Peace and abundance. Thank you, everybody, for joining.